Happy trails to you. The dependable Dodge Plymouth dealer in your neighborhood, the man who sells and services the elegant new 54 Dodge presents the Roy Rogers Radio Show. Yes, folks, it's the Roy Rogers Radio Show for the whole family. Adventure, suspense, mystery, and music. Starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, the Mellow Man, and an all-star cast. And now, here to greet you with a song and a story are Roy and Dale. Y'all come, y'all come, y'all come, y'all come, oh, y'all come, see us when you can. <laughs> well, hi, you folks. Here it is, another Thursday, and here we are back again for Dodge with a song and a story. You heard part of the song just now. It's called, Y'all Come. And that's just exactly the invitation I sent out to all of our friends in Southern California when we returned to the good old Double R Bar Ranch after being in Europe and traveling around so much. Yep, I decided to give a party one Sunday evening, a kind of a combination barbecue and square dance. Swing, lead right out to the center we were all of the having a swell time. Dale was calling a square Circle dance, and I was about to join in when Pat walked up. Hey, Roy, somebody wants you on the telephone. Well, thanks, Pat. Right and left through, then turn back. Chain the ladies in the center of the floor. Hello? Roy Rogers? Yes? Listen close, Roy. There's a time bomb planted where it'll take care of Dale Evans unless you do exactly as I tell you. What? A time bomb. The kind that goes tick-tock, tick-tock, and then boom. Know what I mean? Who is this? Never mind. You get $25,000 in small old bills. I'll contact you later and tell you where to leave it. Wait a minute. When you give me the twenty-five grand, i will tell you where the bomb is. If you don't get me the money, tick-tock, tick-tock, boom. Goodbye, Dale. Understand? Yes. Smart boy going to play ball, smart boy? Yes, I'll play ball. In just a moment, we'll return to Roy and Dale in part one of tonight's story. Now, folks, here are the Mellow Men. There's a better deal for the man at the wheel of a Dodge Top rated truck. It delivers the goods anytime, anywhere. Choose the 6 or V8, you've got power to spare. Dodge is rugged and handsome, it's all brand new. Dodge is price so low, you say. There's a better deal for the man at the wheel of a Dodge Top rated truck. Drive it today. Yes, folks, new Dodge job-rated trucks really do mean a better deal for the man at the wheel. For instance, only Dodge trucks offer new Power Dome V8s plus famous Thrifty Sixes. The fact is, new Power Dome V8s are more powerful than any comparable mass-produced truck V8. That's because exclusive design dome-shaped combustion chambers squeeze more power from every drop of fuel and cut fuel and maintenance bills at the same time. Road test a new Power Dome V8 for yourself. See your dependable Dodge truck dealer tomorrow. And now back to Roy Rogers and Dale Evans in part one of tonight's story. Folks, you folks, just a minute. I, I'm sorry to interrupt the party. Just a minute, please. Folks, I'm awfully sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. Well, just a minute now. Something's come up. I can't explain it now, but you'll be doing me a big favor if you'll just go quietly without asking questions. Roy, what on earth has happened? One thing I can promise you, that we're going to have this party again. And next time, I hope we'll all be able to finish it. Roy, what is it? Pat... Yeah, Roy. Pat, stay with Dale a minute. I'll be right back. Sure. City Hall. Connect me with Chief of Detectives Thad Brown, please.
Have they all gone? Yes, that was the last car. Now, Roy, will you please tell me what this is all about? Dale, I, uh, well, I'd like to tell you, but, well, this is one time when I just can't. You can't? That's right. It's something that's come up and kind of sudden, and, well, it's so secret I can't even tell you. Oh, I think I know what it is. You do? Can I guess? Well, sure. You've been called by one of the government agencies in Washington to work on something that's top secret. Uh... Yeah, yeah, you, you sure guessed it, Dale. I, I never could keep anything a secret from you. I'm glad, Roy, because I know how much you want to help our country. And I know how much you can help, too. Well, I'll just say good night, then. Uh, uh, Dale. Yes? Dale, I, I hope you won't mind, but, well, I want to ask a favor of you. Well, sure, Roy, anything. I want you to go to the bedroom in the West Wing and lock yourself in. Lock myself in? Don't ask questions now, Dale. Just do as I say, please. All right, Roy, if you say so. Thanks. Uh, uh, how, how long should I stay there? I'll let you know, but uh, don't come out until I come for you. Gosh, Roy, you're acting awfully mysterious. Are you sure this isn't some kind of a joke? It's no joke, Dale. It's serious, very serious. Then I want to help. No. But, Roy, I've always helped in the past, or at least I've tried to. You have helped, Dale, but this time you can't. There's one other thing. Yes? We're going to have a guest staying overnight, a, a lady. I'd like her to stay with you. Who is she, Roy? Well, she's a, a friend of Thad Brown's. The chief of the detective bureau? That's right. Uh, now, will you please go upstairs? <sighs> okay, Roy, if you say so. But I hope someday you'll tell me what this is all about. Someday I will. <laughs> me to answer the door, Roy? No, I'll get it, Pat. Well, now, who'd be calling this time of night? Hello, Roy. Oh, hi, Fed. Come in. Uh, this is Officer Larks, Roy Rogers. How do you do, Mr. Rogers? Hello, Miss Larks. Dale's upstairs in a room in the West Wing. I haven't told her about the phone call. I, I was hoping we could keep it from her and, well, till it's all over. Well, I understand, Roy. I'll try to evade the issue, Mr. Rogers. Now, would you like to show me the way? I'll have Pat take you up. Uh, Pat... Yeah, Roy. Pat, this is Chief Brown and Officer Larks. How do you do, Pat? How do you do? Hi. Show Miss Larks up to where Dale is, will you? Sure. Uh, just follow me, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Roy, has he called again? No, not yet. Well, where's the telephone extension in case he does? There's one in the kitchen and one upstairs where Dale is. Good. That's it. Now, give me a chance to get to the kitchen before you answer. Right. Hello? Roy? Y yes. You ready for instructions? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, listen carefully. Tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock, you'll walk into your bank and draw out $25,000 in small old bills. From the bank, you'll drive up Western Avenue to Los Feliz Boulevard. Stay on Los Feliz until you reach the turnoff into Griffith Park. Got it? Yes, Los Feliz to the turnoff into Griffith Park. Smart. Wilson Golf Course in the park? Yes, I think so. On the south side, the road parallels a second green. Drive slowly down this road until you see a signal. You got it? Yes. Now remember, go directly to the park from the bank. It shouldn't take you over 20 minutes. All right. You just keep on schedule tomorrow and everything will be fine. Just fine, smart boy. Boy, Dale's sure curious about what's happening, Roy. And I'd kind of like to know what's going on, too. I'll tell you, Pat, just as soon as I can. Well, we're monitoring all incoming calls, Roy. I'll get a report on that one in a minute. Monitoring calls? How come? Answer it, Roy. Okay. Hello? Uh, no, this is Roy Rogers. I'll call him. It's for you, Thad. Oh, thanks. Brown speaking. Roy, I wish you'd I tell me what... Quiet, Pat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's something. Check with me later. I'll be here. Well? Well, he traced the call, Roy. It came from a payphone in a drive-in on Ventura Boulevard. However, he left the drive-in before our men could get there, but we did get a description of the car he's driving. It's a black coupe with a large dent in the right front fender. I see. Well, what do I do now, Thad? 
Exactly as he instructed. We'll have the entire area near the golf course covered tomorrow. If he shows up for the meet, we'll get him. Thad, are you sure Dale will be safe here with me gone? The grounds are covered and Miss Larks is with her. I know, but what good can that do? The man said the time bomb was already planted. Time bomb? Ro you Ro hit the nail right on the head, Roy. What do you mean? Time bombs must explode within a limited number of hours, and they must be planted. So if we can keep Dale away from her usual surroundings until the bomb explodes, she'll be safe. Well, you'd better get it, Roy. I'll listen in from the kitchen. Right. Hello? Roy? Yes? It's me again, Roy. Just want to give you a little tip, smart boy. Yes? No tricks tomorrow. Tricks? No cops. If there's so much as one cop near the meat, I won't show. And if I don't show, you won't know where the bomb is, will you? No, I, I won't. And Roy, I'm real good with a rifle. I'll get her anyway if you try to be too smart. Wait a minute. Don't hang up. Having time, smart boy. See you tomorrow. Roy, what's the matter? Thad. I heard him. Well, what are you going to do about it? I think it's time we call Dale in. Let her decide. There's no need to call me, Mr. Brown. Dale, what are you doing down here? My curiosity got the better of me, Roy. I listened to that last phone call on the extension upstairs. There's nothing to decide, Mr. Brown. I want you to go ahead with your original plan. Cover Griffith Park tomorrow. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll return to Roy and Dale in the second part of tonight's story. Do you know how little it costs to step up to a big, beautiful 54 Dodge? The answer may surprise you. Actually, you can buy a brand new Dodge for only a few dollars more than the lowest priced car on the market. Yes, Dodge, with its big car performance, big car luxury, big car value is the lowest-priced V8 in its field. And what a bargain in economy and performance. See and drive the long, low 54 Dodge at your nearby Dodge dealers. By every standard, every comparison, the dependable 54 Dodge is your best new car buy. See it tomorrow. And now back to Roy Rogers and Dale Evans in part two of tonight's story. <laughs> Roy, you will be careful this morning, won't you? You won't take any unnecessary chances. I'll be careful, Dale. Bullet knows you're going for a ride, Roy. He wants to go. Not this time, Bullet. Oh, I wish I could do something, Roy. I, I just feel so helpless. You can help, Dale, just by staying inside and doing what Miss Larks tells you to. Morning, Miss Evans. Morning, Thad. Well, Roy, it's 10.30. Time you were leaving for the bank. Yep, I'm ready. This is Sergeant Powers, Roy. How do you do, How sir? How do you do? I've assigned him to ride with you. He'll be out of sight down on the floor in the back seat of your car. Another car will be following you, but it'll be some distance back. Thad, suppose something happens before I reach the park. Sergeant Powers has a three-way radio with him. He'll be able to keep us informed of your progress as well as listen in to my instructions to the other cars. I see. Now, Roy, whatever you do, don't worry. Don't tense up. We've got the park well covered. We'll be with you every second of the way. Sergeant Powers. Still here, Roy. Powers to Brown. Go ahead, Powers. We're on Western Avenue near Los Feliz. Good. Let me know when you turn out of Los Feliz. Right. Roy. Yes? How did it go in the bank? Any trouble getting the money? No, they had it already, like you said they would. Good. Those small old bills you're carrying are right out of the Federal Reserve Bank. We got a list of the serial numbers. You people think of everything, don't you? We try to. 
Where are we now? Just turning off Western on to Los Feliz. It's exactly 12 minutes after 11. We're right on schedule. Brown to Unit 19 and Unit 28. Cover the Vermont entrance to the park. Powers to Brown. Go ahead, Powers. Turning into Las Feliz now. Right. That's funny. What's that? That car behind us. What car? It's been following us ever since we left the bank. It's right behind us now. I pulled over to let him pass, but he, he won't do it. What kind of a car is it? Can't tell for sure. It's a black coupe. Take a close look at the right front fender. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a big dent in it. Powers, he's pulling up alongside. He's cutting in front of us. He's flagging me down. Powers to Brown. Okay, Powers. Suspect's car intersecting. Close in. Close in. Roy, what's happening? Well, he stopped his car up ahead. Now he's getting out. He's walking back here. Hello, smart boy. Got a package for me? Yeah. Here! Hey! Oh! Hold him, Roy. Go, you! You fool! You'll never save her now! We'll see about that! Okay, Roy. Okay, that's enough. All right, mister. Lock your hands behind your head fast. Where is it, mister? Where'd you put that bomb? You're so smart, smart boy. Find it yourself. Haven't they finished searching the house? Not yet, Dale. Well, I wish they'd hurry. I've got a dress for the Christian group meeting. But you can't go tonight, Dale. I haven't missed a Monday night meeting since we returned from Europe. We better check with Officer Powers. But, Roy, the bomb couldn't be planted at the meeting. Hey, Roy, you, you don't suppose that polecat just said there was a bomb planted so you'd pay him off? Well, it's possible, Pat. But as long as he hasn't talked... We've got to go on the assumption that there is a bomb. Hi, Roy. Hello, officer. Oh, Hello. Hello. We're almost through inside, Roy. So far, we haven't found anything suspicious. Officer Powers, wouldn't it be all right for me to attend the regular meeting of the Hollywood Christian group this evening? Meeting? Well, I don't know. Uh, where's it going to be held? On Cherokee, in Hollywood, in Mrs. Williams' home. Does the group always hold its meetings there? Oh. No, this is the first time we've ever gone to Mrs. Williams. Well, in that case, I think it'd be safe enough. Mr. Powers, Pat thinks maybe that uh, the extortionist was bluffing about having planted a time bomb. I don't think so, Roy. Really? Well, why are you so sure? We checked the prisoner through R&I. His name's Donergan. He was a demolition specialist with the OSS during the war. There goes Dale to the meeting, Roy. Well, it's 8 o'clock. She'd better hurry. She'll be late. Oh, meeting's at 8.30, huh? That's right. Well, I guess we can relax. You hungry, Pat? Yeah, come to think of it, I am. Me too. I'll get it. Hello? Hi, Roy. It's Thad Brown. Yes, Thad. Well, we finally got Donner going to talk. Had to trick him to do it, but we learned that there is a bomb and when it's set to go off. When? In just 20 minutes. You better get out of the house. 20 minutes? That's right. Donegan seemed pretty sure Dale would be killed. He even seemed to know Dale's usual routine. Oh? Tell me, where is Dale every Monday night at 8.20, Roy? Why, in her car on the way to the Christian group meeting. I see. Well, then... Pat, come on! Roy! Roy, what is it? to catch her, Pat. We've got to. Roy, look out! What time is it? Seven minutes after eight. Oh, I should have known. We all thought the bomb was planted in the house, stationary. Better not talk, Roy. Just drive. Now the freeway's right ahead. Once we're on it, we can make better time. <laughs> Thank you. 
We haven't passed her, have we? No, I'm sure we haven't. Now, you'd better get over to the right, Roy. We gotta go down Highland and then cut over to Cherokee. Yeah, I know. Uh, Pat, do you know the street number of the house where they were holding the meeting? What? Mrs. Williams' house number. Do you know it? Well, no. Don't you, Roy? No, I don't. What time is it now? 8.15. Roy? I know, Pat. We're doing everything we can. Roy! Roy, there she is! There's Dale's car. She just turned on Cherokee. Yeah. I'll get her. I've got to. There she is, Roy. I'll cut in front of her car. Dale! Dale, pull over! Hey, she sees me, Roy. She's stopping. Dale, get out of the car! What? The bomb, it's somewhere in your car. Get out! Run, Dale, and take those people with you. Roy, where are you going? The car can't stay here. Somebody might get hurt. Eight nineteen. Vacant lot. This ought to do it. Roy, that was a wonderful thing you did, driving the car away so those innocent people wouldn't be hurt. Well, I think it was just plumb crazy. Roy, you knew that bomb was set to go off at 8.20? I know, Pat, but I had to take a chance that maybe Donergan's watch was a little slow. It was, about 30 seconds slow. Roy, suppose Donergan's watch had been fast. Oh, well, in that case... Ew. Roy, there's still a couple of things I don't understand. Like what? Well, how did Thad Brown get Donegan to talk and tell him where the bomb was and what time it was going to go off? He tricked him, Dale. He put one of his detectives into Donegan's cell disguised as a prisoner. This detective had some comic books with him. Comic books? That's right. What kind of comic books? Now, what kind of comic books would you think, Pat? Oh, I don't know. Uh, uh they, um, they wouldn't be by any chance, um... Uh... Some Roy Rogers comic book. That's right, Pat. When Donegan saw them, he just couldn't resist blowing off his mouth. He wanted to let the other prisoner know what a big man he was. Well, great jumping catfish. That was sure a stupid thing to do. Sure, but Thad Brown counted on Donegan being stupid. Can you think of any other type of person who would try such a stunt? That's right, Pat. Criminals aren't smart. They just think they are. You can say that again. Just one more thing, Roy. Yeah? When did this uh, Donergan fellow plant the bomb under the car? Sunday morning while you were at church. You see, he made a study of your habits, Dale. He knew that you always go to church on Sunday and that you always have a meeting of the Christian group on Monday. And, well, maybe you ought to change your habits a little. Oh, no, Roy. I may vary them from time to time, but I'll never change. Good girl. And now, what do you say we call up all of our friends and continue that party where we left off? When you live out in the country, everybody is your neighbor. On this one thing you can rely. They all come to see you, and they never leave you saying, y'all come to see us by and by. Y'all come, y'all come, y'all come, y'all come. Oh, y'all come to see us when you can. Y'all come, y'all come, y'all come, y'all come, y'all come. Oh, y'all come to see us now and then. The kin folks are a-coming, they're a-coming by the dozen. Eating everything from soup to hay. And right after dinner, they ain't looking any thinner. 
And here's what you hear them say. Y'all come, y'all come, y'all come. Honest Abe will play the old trombone. Georgie, he's cornet, but on the bass I'm betting, and Bud's a playing on the A card D. Y'all come, y'all come, oh, y'all come to see us when you can. Y'all come, y'all come now, you hear? Y'all come, oh, y'all come to see us now and then. Y'all come. Now grandma's a wishing that they'd come out to the kitchen and help to do the dishes right away. The lazy thing. But they all start a leaving, even though she's a grieving. Well, you can still hear grandma say, Y'all come, y'all come, y'all come, y'all come. Oh, y'all come to see us when you can. Y'all come, y'all come, y'all come, y'all come, y'all come. Oh, y'all come to see us now and then. Y'all come now and drive that pretty little red Dodge. Come and see us now and then. Maybe you folks saw an old film on television that showed the first African expedition in which automobiles were driven all the way from Cairo to Cape Town. You saw those Dodge cars take the beating of their lives through some of the wildest country anybody ever saw. It was sort of funny looking at that old film to see the styles they had in those days and to know how pretty the new Dodge for 54 looks today. But those old cars and the new 54 Dodge sure have one thing in common. They had big hearts, plenty of power, and they were made by real craftsmen who knew what they were doing. You'll know that when you see the new 54 Dodge. Underneath that smart, modern styling and those sweeping thoroughbred lines is sound, solid, honest workmanship that delivers everything a good car ought to have for easy, comfortable, enjoyable driving. Things like Dodge full-time power steering, not part-time, mind you, but full-time power steering so that you end up a day of driving fresh as a daisy. That's just one of the things that makes Dodge a car that you can be proud to own. See your Dodge Plymouth dealer soon. You'll be glad you did. And if you're looking for a good used car, see the first choice used cars on your Dodge dealer's lot. They're tops. Well, that does it for tonight, folks. See you next Thursday, same time. Until then, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. Happy trails with Dodge, the car that gives you more. The Roy Rogers Radio Show is produced under the supervision of Art Rush and directed by Ralph Rose. Tonight's story was written by Ralph Rose and Charles Smith. Music arranged and conducted by Frank Worth. Production assistant, Virginia White. Tonight's all-star cast included Pat Brady, The Mellow Men, Joan Banks, Vic Perrin, Jack Crucian, and Paul McGuire. Join us again next Thursday evening at this same time when the dependable Dodge Plymouth dealer in your neighborhood will again bring you the transcribed Roy Rogers radio show. This is Lou Crosby speaking for the man who sells and services Dodge job-rated trucks and the elegant new 54 Dodge.